Hi, boys and girls. This week, we will read Stink and the Freaky Frog Freakout by Megan McDonald, illustrated by Peter Reynolds. The author and the illustrator might seem a little bit familiar to you, and they are. That's because Megan McDonald is the author for the book that we read last week, which was Judy Moody Mood Martian. Just like Judy Moody, Stink is also a part of a bigger series. That means a collection of books. Stink is a younger brother of Judy Moody. He's smart and thinks knowledge is pretty awesome. In every book in the Stink series, you will see him questioning, investigating, and discovering the world around him. Before we begin our read aloud, let's go over our vocabulary words. This is part one of your weekly lessons. Annual. Can you say annual? Annual. An annual event happens once each year. We spend the whole year looking forward to our annual summer beach party. The second vocabulary word this week is recited. Can you say recited? If you recited something, you said it aloud after you had learned it. After Carly read the poem to herself many times, she recited it for the class. Our third word of the week is protested. Can you say protested? If you protested, you said you did not agree with a statement or an idea. Several people protested after the mayor announced the new playground plans. Get your paper and pencil ready for your vocabulary word of the week. These are the vocabulary word cards that you will be looking at this week. If you notice, there are four steps for you to complete on this page. Steps one and two, you can say out loud, and steps three and four will require for you to write them down on paper. Here we go. Step one, read the word and its meaning above. An annual event happens once each year. Step two, read this sentence. The whole family looks forward to Aunt Betty's annual harvest feast. Step three, use the word annual in your own sentence. Step four, make a list of synonyms and antonyms for the word annual. Students, you will work independently to complete steps three and four on a piece of paper for each vocabulary card in this video. For the collaborative discussion, you can complete it by answering the questions out loud with a partner. Your objective for this assignment is, repeat after me, I can use antonyms and synonyms. Your second vocabulary word is recited. Please complete steps one through four on your own. And your last word is protested. Please complete steps one through four on your own as well. Hi class, this is part two of your weekly lessons. Please get your paper and pencil ready for your stop, think, and jot questions. This week, we will read Stink and the Freaky Frog Freakout by Megan McDonald. The genre for our story of the week is realistic fiction. Realistic fiction tells a story about characters and events that are like those in real life. What to look for in realistic fiction? characters who act, think, and speak like real people, dialogue, talking between characters, 
setting with places that could be real, a plot, which includes events that happen in the beginning, middle, and end of the story, conflict or problem faced by the main character, and a resolution to the problem. If you recall last week, you saw an anchor chart that looked like this. These are the characteristics of realistic fiction. Just like Judy Moody, Stink is also part of a bigger series. That means a collection of books. Stink is a younger brother of Judy Moody. He's smart and thinks knowledge is pretty awesome. In every book in the Stink series, you will see him questioning, investigating, and discovering the world around him. In this story, Stink has a problem, and one that's a bit unusual. Let's preview the text before we begin reading. Take a look at these illustrations from the first few pages of the book. What might a boy who is interested in frog sounds do with a balloon, a comb, a rubber band, and jingle bells? You can pause this screen to make a prediction. You can say your prediction out loud. Your objective for this exercise is, I can make predictions using text features, characteristics of genre, and structures. Again, what might a boy who is interested in frog sounds do with a balloon, a comb, a rubber band, and jingle bells? Pause the screen to make a prediction. You can say your prediction out loud. Stink and the Freaky Frog Freakout by Megan McDonald, illustrated by Peter Reynolds. Judy Moody's younger brother, Stink, has been finding frogs all over the place at the pool, in his boot, even in the bathtub. When Stink and his friends visit a nature center to learn about frogs, they find out about the first annual Frog Neck Lake Frog Camp. Before he can participate in the late night adventure though, Stink has to study different frogs and the sounds they make and pass a quiz. Annual. An annual event happens once each year. Prep. Crack, crack, squeak. Stink listened to frog calls on the computer. He listened to frog sounds that he taped with his own tape recorder by sticking it out the window at night. Stink listened to frog calls on the way to school Monday morning and in the car on the way to swim lessons. Prep. Crack, crack, squeak. At swim practice, he tried some out on his friends. You sound like a duck, said Webster. You sound like a squeak toy, said Sophie. You sound like a sick banjo, said Riley. Thanks, said Stink. See, spring peepers sound like, a squeak, sound like squeak toys, and wood frogs sound like ducks quacking. You're quacked, said Webster. Sophie and Riley cracked up. You guys sound like southern leopard frogs. A leopard frog sounds like a person laughing. No lie. Yeah, but nothing sounds like a sick banjo, said Riley. Nothing except for the northern green frog. It sounds like a loose banjo string. You know, like a rubber band twang. You sure are freaky for frogs, said Riley. Thanks, said Stink. You should marry a frog. You like them so much. Hardy har har, said Stink. Stink could not wait till swimming was over. He had a great idea for how to learn frog sounds. He would need a comb, a balloon, two rocks, a can of spray paint, a rubber band, a rubber duck, some jingle bells, and that's all. Stink blew up the balloon and rubbed it with his hand. He clicked rocks together. He twanged a rubber band. Judy poked her head into Stink's room. 
Mouse, the family cat, squeezed past her. Stink, I'm trying to study my times tables. I can't hear myself. She stopped when she saw the pile of junk on Stink's floor. What? I'm using this stuff to make frog sounds. Here, I'll show you. Stink rubbed his finger along the teeth of a comb. This sounds like a chorus frog. Stink shook the can of spray paint. And this sounds like a northern cricket frog. Mouse darted under the bed. And this, are uh, sounds like mom when she sees the mess in your room, said Judy. Hardy har har, chuckled Stink. You're croaking me up. Can you please shut your door so I don't have to hear Froggle Rock all day? Boys and girls, I'm going to go ahead and stop right here. Here's my think aloud. I'm not sure why Mouse started under the bed. I remember that Mouse is a cat, but I'm not sure what darted means. When do cats dart? I'm not quite sure, but I do know as a good reader that I can reread. I will reread paragraphs 21, 22, and 23. Let's reread to find out. What? I'm using this stuff to make frog sounds. Here, I'll show you. Stink rubbed his finger along the teeth of a comb. This sounds like a chorus frog. Stink shook the can of spray paint. And this sounds like a northern cricket frog. Mouse darted under the bed. Ah, now I see what it means. Now I see what darted means. Stink shakes a paint can to make a frog noise. This noise must scare Mouse. So darted must mean ran. If I substitute ran for darted, the sentence still makes sense. By the way, boys and girls, this is a strategy that you can use on your own. That's the purpose of me using thick alouds during our read alouds. They are for the purpose of you copying what I do. And what I did right now is um, I came across a word that I wasn't quite sure of. And so I reread and I substituted that word with a word that did make sense. You can go ahead and stop the screen to answer your stop, think, and jot question. Question number one is, how is Judy's relationship with Stink here the same to their relationship in Judy Moody Mood Martian? Class, you can go ahead and rewind the video a little bit and then press play when you're ready. Stink squeaked his rubber duck down the stairs. He snored up a storm while he made a snack. He shook the can of paint, clicked the stones, and jingled the bells. Wood frog, pickerel frog, cricket frog, he recited. Stink, keep it down, please, said Dad, poking his head around the corner. I'm on the phone. No spray painting in the house, said Mom. Take that outside. I'm not painting, said Stink. Doesn't anybody around here know a northern cricket frog when they hear one? Mom crinkled her forehead. It's homework, said Stink. I have to take a test. A frog test, said Judy, coming into the kitchen. I have to learn frog calls, said Stink, for the first annual Frog Neck Lake frog count on Friday. Right, said Mom. It's a real thing. The test is on the computer, Stink told her. You click on a frog and it makes a sound. Then you guess which frog is making that sound. Multiple choice, said Judy. Easy peasy, she teased. I have a multiple choice for you, said Mom. You can go back upstairs and A, finish your homework, B, finish your homework, C, finish your homework, or D, all of the above. 
recited. If you recited something, you said it aloud after you had learned it. Here's another think aloud, boys and girls. I'd like to stop here. In paragraph 36, Stink explains how this test will work. Mm, I'm not sure I follow it. I will reread the text to understand it better because I know that this is what good readers do when they don't understand what they have read. They reread. Paragraph 36. It's a real thing. The test is on the computer, Stink told her. You click on a frog and it makes a sound. Then you guess which frog is making that sound. Ah, oh, okay. The text says the test is on the computer. It's multiple choice. I think Stink will hear a frog call from the computer. Then he'll see pictures of frogs. He'll have to click on the picture of the frog that makes that sound. That makes sense to me. Question number two, what are some of the sound effects Stink makes with different household objects? What does that tell you about Stink? But Stink protested. It's your choice, Mom said. Stink trudged back up the stairs with Judy close behind. And don't forget your non-frog homework too, Mom called. In Stink's room, Mouse curled up on his backpack. How am I gonna learn all these frog calls by Tuesday? Stink asked Judy. He held out his notebook for her to see. You can't go on the frog count unless you pass the quiz. I'll help you, said Judy. But let's make it a game. Instead of rock, paper, scissors, we'll call it rock, balloon, squeak toy. How do we play? Hmm. Close your eyes. I'll make a sound. You guess which frog it is. But we have to keep it down because mom won't like us doing frog homework first. Uh, okay, come on, said Stink. He squeezed his eyes shut. Judy rubbed the balloon. She twanged the rubber band. She clicked the stones. Protested. If you protested, you said why you did not agree with a statement or an idea. Question number three, who are the major and minor characters? How do you know? You can pause here and click play when you're ready. Question four, what is the setting when Judy helps Stink with his homework? How is this similar to the setting in Judy Moody, Mood Martian, where Stink and Judy talk about the mood pillows? Question five, how does Judy help solve a problem for Stink? Meow. Mouse pawed at the stones. Chorus frog, wood frog, cricket frog. Stink guessed. Judy checked Stink's notebook. Sorry, leopard frog, green frog, cricket frog. Stink hung his head. Hey, you got one right, cricket frog. Come on, Stink, just get super duper quiet and really listen, okay? Ready? Ready, Freddy, said Stink. Judy rubbed, clicked, squeaked, and twanged. Balloon, stones, squeak toy, rubber band, Stink said. That's leopard frog, cricket frog, spring pepper, spring peeper, green frog. Bingo, said Judy. She laughed, chuckled, whistled, peeped, snored, squeaked, jingled, and croaked until Stink knew pickerel frog from peeper. Chorus frog from cricket. Yikes! said Judy, putting a shh finger to her lips. I bet they can hear us all the way at the end of Croker Road. Do you think they'll call our street Croker Road because of all the frogs? 
Because of animal frogs stink, not human boy frogs. Ribbit, stink croaked. Okay, close your eyes. I bet I can stump you. Ready? Judy made a zzz sound. Bullfrog, no, what frog? No, bullfrog. He opened his eyes. Zipper frog, said Judy. That was just me zipping the zipper on your backpack. No fair, said Stink. There's no such thing as a zipper frog. Wow. Mouse pounced on the jingle bells. Jingle frog, Stink and Judy said at the same time. They cracked themselves up. We gotta finish our not frog homework, Stink. Besides, you're like the frog king now. No, you're like president of the frogs. Now you just have to practice on real frogs. Squink, said Stink. On Tuesday, Stink Moody, frog genius, passed his test with flying colors. Frog test, that is. Stink could not wait for Frog Friday. Okay, that completes the end of our story. You've got one more stop, think, and jot question. Question number six, how does Judy finally stump stink? If you enjoyed today's read aloud, you might be interested in checking out the whole Stink Moody series. You may do so by visiting this link. Until next time.